All right, everybody, this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Baseball Talk for Monday, Memorial Day, May 30th, 2022. Um, filming this a little later than I normally would. I'm up a little later than I normally would. I'm just a little pumped, a little hyped. Uh, I just went and watched Top Gun Maverick for the second time this weekend. I went and watched it Thursday night, opening night. And uh, yeah, I don't remember. I know I filmed on Thursday. I remember talking about it. I don't remember if I had filmed this before I went to the movie. Oh, I did. Yes, I went early in the day. Yeah, that's right. I went in the first showing Thursday. So I did film this after. Yeah, so I already kind of told you. But I mean, I'm still, I watched it a second time today. I'm still just as pumped, just as hyped. And the movie is good. That movie is, ah, uh, beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> I, I just, I, I really want to talk about it with someone who's seen it. But I, I, nobody has seen it yet because... People just aren't, people just don't go to the movie theater anymore. I get it. You know, a lot of people, even even me, I'm an introverted person. So like, I, I like my space. You know, I like, I don't like crowds. But movie theaters really aren't all that crowded these days anymore. So I don't feel crowded when I go there. And I just love, I love the theater experience. I love watching on the big screen, the surround sound, just having a comfortable seat, the nice big fountain drink, the popcorn that just, you can't replicate anywhere else popcorn that you buy at the store. It just doesn't taste anywhere near as good as movie theater popcorn. It's just some, just the experience. I love the experience of the movie theater. I'll never stop going to the movie theater. It's one of the simple joys um, in my life. So, yeah, but Top Gun Maverick, I think it really, I do honestly think it's probably the best movie of the year so far. Obviously, it's such a lot of years, a lot of time left in the year. A lot of the Oscar contenders haven't come out yet. There's going to be better movies. But it's the, it's the top contender, the leading, the leader for now. Also, I had a really cool opportunity that kind of popped up yesterday. Um, this this lady I met at, um, through mutual friends, through a, through a sports group on Facebook, actually. Um, she's, she's got this job where she like delivers dogs across the country, so she... She picked up this, she's from Arizona, she picked up this dog in Dallas, and she's driving it to Washington, uh, and she, you know, it was a, she was a little reluctant to drive on her own, so she was just, just asking us in the group, hey, does anybody want to come down to Texas and drive to Washington with me? I was like, I would totally do that if it were, you know, Tuesday night or Wednesday morning or something, and she was like, well, you know, if you, if you can meet me in Denver on Wednesday morning, uh, you can come join me and I'll pay you. And I was like, heck yeah. So I get this, this kind of free road trip where I'm actually getting paid to go on it. Um, get to see some places that I haven't seen yet, like like Utah. And hopefully, you know, we're, we're gonna veer up into Wyoming and to see the Grand Tetons and stuff. That's what I that's what I wanna do. It's a little bit longer. I did, like the, 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 the Google Maps route it says 18 hours, but it's taking us through Utah. And the ugly part of Oregon, which is Eastern Oregon, which I don't really care to see over there. And I want to veer uh, Salt Lake City, go north, up into Idaho Falls, and then around to Jackson Hole, Grand Tetons, up through western Montana, Yellowstone, Missoula, you know, Coeur d'Alene, Spokane, and down through eastern Washington, which is also really ugly, but... Um, you know, so we were talking about that yesterday. I was all pumped, all jacked, all hyped up to do this on my days off. Because getting to Denver, like even last minute, um, I found a red-eye flight Wednesday morning, 65 bucks. Denver's one of the cheaper places you can fly to from Portland. So I was all excited for that. <laughs> but it turns out that she uh, has having car problems. So she might not be able to go. So we, we we'll find out tomorrow. If, if if this is still gonna happen, so it's pretty short notice. I'm probably not gonna be able to get the plane tickets for sixty five bucks, but I'm glad I held off on purchasing them because I, otherwise I'd be stuck going to Denver, which I guess wouldn't be the worst thing. I mean, I haven't really gone out and explored Denver yet. Last time I went to Colorado, I just flew into Denver, hung out in downtown Denver for like a couple hours, and then I went down to Colorado Springs because Colorado Springs was where I was trying to spend my time. When I was in Colorado, not Denver. 
So Denver's a place I still need to see a little bit more of. Uh, and, you know, a $65 last minute flight, that's not bad at all. It's just, I don't really want to spend money. I don't want to find a place to stay on uh, short notice. I don't want to fly home on short notice because coming home to Portland, flying in and out of Portland right now is one of the more expensive places in the nation. There was actually an article I read online, I think it was like a week ago, but Portland is the fourth most expensive place to fly out of right now. So that's not good. That's not great. And I have noticed that if, if I fly out of Seattle, like if I can find a way to get up to Seattle on a Tuesday night, uh, it's a lot cheaper for me to fly places. So, um, but yeah, so that's, that could still be on. That could be really cool. Uh, I'm totally down for, you know, this random road trip, this random spontaneous road trip with someone I don't technically really know, but like I, I'm familiar with someone that like, you know, we, you know, have mutual interests and stuff. Uh, we could talk, because she lives in Tucson. I want to move to Tucson. We could talk about that all day long and, like, uh, figure an 18-hour road trip in two days, because i got to be back Friday morning for work. So I'd preferably like to get home, leave Wednesday morning, get home Thursday night. Uh, an 18-hour trip, that gives us plenty of time if we rotate driving um, to get through to stops and places because I also have an America the Beautiful pass so we can stop at national parks like Grand Tetons, uh, Yellowstone, stuff like that, anywhere else along the way. Um, uh, we're not going, the route isn't far enough south to go through Bryce Canyon and Zion and all that stuff. And stuff. We're not going far enough north to go through Glacier, but Definitely Yellowstone would be cool to see for, you know, I know there's a lot in Yellowstone. Like, you probably need, like, a week, really, to do all of Yellowstone. But, um, I just want to see a moose. I just want to see a moose, moose somewhere. I don't see the Tetons. I don't even, we don't need to get that close to the Tetons. I'm, I just want to find somewhere within, you know, a couple hours range. I'm assuming they're big enough that you can see them from a couple hours away. I just want to see the mountains. They're just, uh, the pictures of them look really cool. I, I just want to get my own picture. Uh, and say that I've seen the Tetons because they're the coolest looking mountains that I've seen so far. But, all right, let's get to the part where you tuned in for, for my zero viewers, seven and a half minutes in. Five hitters to consider adding uh, to be through this week here. Cesar Hernandez, second baseman for the Nationals. He's really on fire right now, and he's... Um, back atop the batting order where he is the leadoff hitter, so he will see the most opportunities, most of the bats. And as long as he continues to rake like he is, he's going to stay there. Uh, Gio Urshula, he's a, he's a player I've been considering putting on here for the last week and a half or so. Um, he's always just missed the cut of the five that I want to talk about, but he's on. He's made it this time. He's third base and shortstop eligible. He plays for the Twins now. Um, Yankees traded him along with Gary Sanchez for Josh Donaldson. I think the Twins looks like have won that trade so far. It's early. But uh, Dior's still playing really well. Cole Calhoun, remember him from like 10 years ago? He used to be decent. Uh, he He's healthy, and he's playing pretty well for the Texas Rangers. So he could provide you some outfield help. Another outfielder, Ramon Moriano, back from his suspension uh, in Oakland. He's really the only decent bat Oakland kind of still has. Uh, he's probably not going to be there much longer. He's probably going to get traded, uh, but, which I think will only help his situation. But for now, he's still decent enough to have as a backup outfielder or fifth outfielder or utility spot. And then a catcher who also moonlights as a DH. We got Alejandro Kirk of the Blue Jays. He's really raking right now, too. He's getting the majority of the... the, the Catcher, what's the freaking word I'm looking for? It's not reps. Uh, the, the time, let's just say time, behind the plate with Danny Jansen on the injured list. And I think with the way Kurt's been playing, he's probably going to be the uh, the guy who gets the most playing time. He's going to be the, the baseball terms, the guy who gets the strong side of the platoon moving forward. Now some pitchers. I have no streamers for you on Wednesday because it's just a bad, bad day on Wednesday. I don't know why this thing keeps moving. It's kind of pissing me off. 
Um, yeah, no streamers for you on Wednesday. Bad, it's a bad, bad slate for pitchers. Nobody in the streaming tier is worth adding, so you're going to have to live without a pitcher on Tuesday. But for Wednesday, tomorrow, or Tuesday, I've got three for you. And then Thursday, I have two for you. So starting with Tuesday, um, in order of the time uh, that their game starts. Tomorrow we got Michael Walker versus the Reds. Michael Walker, if you remember Michael Walker, he used to be a decent pitcher. He was never a great fancy pitcher. He was a pretty good pitcher overall. Kind of had some injury problems, kind of fell off the face of the earth. He's kind of back now. He's off to a decent start. Not getting a lot of strikeouts, um, but he's getting a lot of quality starts. Uh, and I know he had a bad start last week, and this could be the beginning of the trend in which he go, starts to go down because his peripheral numbers are uh, are a lot worse than, than the actual numbers. Um, like the, the BABIP is a little higher than uh, his ERA, which is typically a bad sign that a, a regression is coming. But with how inept and pathetic the Reds are, I feel like he's going to accumulate another quality start here for us tomorrow. Devin Smeltzer, uh, the young starter for the Twins, uh, has been recalled from the minor leagues, and he's going to make another start. Uh, his three starts so far this year have been pretty, I wouldn't say phenomenal. I was not say phenomenal. Uh, they're pretty good. Um, and if he puts up another good start, there's no reason he's going to lose his spot in rotation right now because Sonny Gray is still injured and um, so they need that they need that pitcher to fill that spot and Devin Smeltzer with the way he's been pitching so far this year should continue to get those starts and the Tigers a team that came into the season with a little bit of some expectations they've kind of fallen flat and so uh, there's not a lot to worry about in that lineup for Devin Smeltzer he should put up quality start and then George Kirby of the Mariners I like George Kirby still I know he, he's really only had one good start so far but I, I just like the talent I think the talent is there and um, as he gets more experience in the major leagues he's only going to get better he's still pretty raw so figuring things out but the Orioles are a good opponent for him to collect a lot of whiffs collect a quality start hopefully collect a win um I'm not even going to get into it with how pathetic and disappointing the Mariners have been this year. I really, I'm just going to say this one thing. I really, <laughs> my uh, fandom of the Mariners is, is definitely complicated. And I secretly hope that these owners sell the team, move the team to Las Vegas, fire everybody. Vegas, or, I, I'm just... Vegas is just the one city that like is close, and there's lots of talk about getting a baseball team. So Vegas makes the most sense, um, and it just completely break my heart. Just break my break my heart, and so I can just be done with them, just like the Sonics did. Just just several ties, so I don't have to root. So I don't feel guilty for continuing to be a fan of this team that doesn't give a shit about us fans, or. Um, putting a good product on the field for its fans to watch. Uh, it's just, I, I just grew up at the right time, the mid nineties to the early two thousands when the Mariners were young, talented, vibrant, exciting. Uh, and the, the team was just right up, you know, right up the freeway, not that far from me. It was impossible not to be a Mariners fan in that era of Mariners baseball. And so I've been a Mariners fan since I was a kid, and I can't quit this team now, even even though I want to so bad. I cannot stand this franchise as an adult. But <laughs> I, I, I just, my fandom is so ingrained, and I'm so stubborn that I can't quit this team no matter how bad I want to. It's toxic. It's a toxic relationship that I have with the Mariners and pretty much all of my sports teams, honestly. Um, I don't know how I got so unfortunate to, to pick teams that are just heartbreaking. Vikings, Mariners, Sonics don't even exist anymore, and I will not root for the Thunder. Uh, 
I barely even acknowledged their existence. That was a, a rare moment there. The... I don't know. Sale Kraken, I guess. I guess I'm a Kraken fan. I don't know. I never don't follow hockey enough. Um, you know, they're bad right now. Um, yeah, the Blazers. I mean, I'm a Blazers fan by default now, but they're, you know, sad. Sad history there. So, it's just rough. Oregon. Oregon's one of those teams that just is on the cusp of being an elite. Um, sports institution but they just they can't get over that hump and until they do they're going to continue to be an embarrassment it's just it's just rough uh it's rough but moving on here thursday so um again no streamers for you on wednesday but thursday here got two for you Corey kluber um for the rays at the rangers Corey kluber's mostly been pretty good this year he's had a couple of really bad starts so that's making him look worse than he is. Overall, he's accumulated a lot of good starts this year on against the Rangers, a team that is bad in a, in a, a pitcher-friendly environment. He should accumulate another quality start here. And then Matthew Liberatore of the Cardinals, the young, uh, I want to say phenom, but that's not really the right word, phenom, the young prospect who has been on the radar for a few years, is finally getting his opportunity with the, with the Cardinals, as the Cardinals are not their usual contender. They're not the, usually they're not the contender they usually are. So here's a Matthew Libertore is getting an opportunity. He's facing the Cubs. The Cubs are in a rebuild. The Cubs have some hitters that are that that'll scare you. A lot of a high strikeout tendencies there for the Cubs hitters that are kind of worrisome. So I think there's high potential for Libertor to have a really good day. And we all know, well, I shouldn't say we all know, but those of us who follow this silly little game of fantasy know that Libertor has all the talent. It's just, is he going to be able to put it together, find consistency against major league hitters? We'll see. But I like his, I like his chances uh, against the Cubs in Wrigley Field on Thursday. So... That's the entire video. I'm going to end this now. And uh, I don't know. I'm not really tired. I know I got to get up at 7. So I probably should go to bed. But I'm not going to just go to bed just to go to bed if I'm not tired. Because I won't fall asleep. It's hard enough for me to fall asleep even when I am tired. So I'm just, yeah, Top Gun, Maverick. It's so good. You, know, you guys got to see it. Even if you hate Tom Cruise, it doesn't matter. You can't deny that Tom Cruise is fabulous at what he does. Uh, he's the biggest action star um, out there right now, honestly. I mean, who else is there? The, the Rock? Does The Rock count? I don't know if The Rock counts. Tom Cruise is, is box, it's huge box office. So, all right. Peace, love, nacho fries. Good night. Good luck. See you on, uh, maybe I'll see you on Thursday. I could be on my way, could be driving on my way back from Denver. But uh, I'm going to try to find some time to film no matter where I am on Thursday, so. See ya.